Hello, geometry students. Um, we are going to go through a little bit of uh, geometry because this is the moment. I just thought I'd show you why the baby is falling asleep. Are you a sleepy baby? Hi, Ryan. Okay. So this appears to be the moment. Uh, I guess the first thing I need to do is say, Alexa, turn off guest room stereo. <laughs> why it gets louder before it gets quieter but let's do this thing unmute here turn it back on the volume over here and we are good to go okay uh this next section is entitled five ways to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram and that is what we're doing that is the main thing uh, but i also want to talk about a little bit of just a major shift from the last section to this section. So the last section was all about, okay, well, what if a shape is a parallelogram or an isosceles trapezoid or a kite or a square? What are all the properties that it has? And now we're moving kind of almost backwards and saying, okay, well, what properties would I need to know a shape has before I can confirm? that it is a rectangle or a square, or in today's case, just a parallelogram. So today is just a parallelogram, everything else comes tomorrow. The first way to prove that something is a parallelogram is of course by that definition. Definitions as we know are always reversible. So uh, my first way is just to say, if a quadrilateral has to be a quadrilateral, has two pairs of parallel sides, then it is a p-gram. You are welcome to write it just like that. If a quad has two pairs of in the parallel symbol sides, then it is a p-gram, uh, p-gram, perfectly fine. Um, and that is correct. It is a correct statement to say uh, if a figure is a parallelogram, then it has two pairs of parallel sides, but it wouldn't be helpful here because, again, the if part, uh, the conclusion is what I already know, and the then part is what I'm trying to show. So if I'm trying to show that something is a parallelogram, then this would be appropriate. Okay, uh, this one I can't prove because it is, of course, a definition. This is what uh, people decided that a parallelogram is. So this is necessary for the other four. Um, the next of the other four looks similar, but requires an extra word, though. I'm going to leave it out. So uh, if a quad has two pairs, of, here's the missing word, uh, congruent sides, then it is a p-gram. Um, so what am I missing here? Well, I didn't have to state it in my first one because there is no way that the adjacent sides, the sides next to one another, could possibly have been parallel, because adjacent sides touch and parallel lines don't, but here it's required. If a quad has two pairs of opposite, so OPP will work, congruent sides, then it is a parallelogram. Without that opposite, I run the risk of something like this, which is not, a parallelogram, which is in fact, by very definition, a kite. Okay, uh, so what we can do with any of these and what we will do with a few of them uh, is to prove this. So I'm gonna go back over here and let's prove this real quick. So my given information is that the shape has two pairs of opposite 
uh, congruent sides. I'll just call it A, B, C, D because I'm not feeling real creative. Um, so given that A, B is congruent to B, C, A, B is congruent to D, C, uh, also that A, D is congruent to its opposite side to B, C, and of course, that should be enough to prove that A, B, C, D is a parallel event. Is A, B, C, D. Um, since I'm making this proof up as I go along, it didn't come with a, uh, with a diagram to begin with. Uh, I'm just going to make my life a little bit easier and kind of pretend that, that the diagram came with a diagonal professionally drawn in like that. I'm, uh, and this should be relatively straightforward, but it does involve some of our theorems from earlier in chapter five. So worth doing here. By the way, if I didn't uh, want to include that as part of my original drawing, I could have always drawn it in uh, later. Remember, if two points exist, then they define a segment. All right, so I'm gonna start with my givens, which for sake of time, I am not going to write down again. Uh, I wrote them over here. I've marked them on the diagram. Life is good. Uh, still, my go-to move is to prove triangles congruent. So I'm going to say that AC is congruent to AC, because if a segment exists, then it's congruent to itself, which I can sum up now as reflexive. Um, boop, right there, reflexive. Uh, you can write reflexive property if you like. You can write if a uh, segment exists, then it's congruent to itself if you like. But that will work. And I'm going to mark it on the diagram. Now, oh, hey, looks like I've got some congruent triangles already. Uh, the triangle D is kind of opposite to that center bit. Uh, to go from D to A, I go across the double. And from A to C, I go across that S looking thing is congruent to triangle. The B is opposite that hypotenuse looking thing. Uh, then I have to go across the double and then across the kind of sneaky thing. So those should be in corresponding orders. Uh, three, this is SSS. And I think one comma, one comma, two. Can't really mess up order too much for SSS. Well, seeing as I knew all three sides were congruent in order to get my triangles congruent, it seems pretty clear that I am going to now uh, prove something about angles. Now, it's true that angle D is congruent to angle B, and I don't really see how that's going to be particularly helpful in this case. So instead, I'm going to list all my other congruent angles, which I guess I could call one over here between the double and the S, and two, so angle one is congruent to angle two. While I'm at it, angle three is <laughs> congruent to angle four. One and two. And I'm just going to leave one and two marked for the moment. Uh, I'm not even going to write three and four as of yet, just to help remind us of something. Of course, this is CPCTC. By the way, I was thinking about this morning. Um, in chapter three, we proved triangles congruent, and then we were allowed to use CPCTC. In chapter five, we proved that something is a parallelogram, and then we're allowed to use any of those properties of a parallelogram. So I don't know, it seems kind of the same. All right, uh, so we just proved angle one is congruent to two. We're going to come back and say that angle three is congruent to angle four in just a second. But while I'm here, why do I care that one is congruent to two? Well, one and two are between those two uh, left and right sides, AB and BC, uh, and they are on opposite or alternate sides of AC, which is a transversal. So those are alternate interior angles, uh, which are congruent. That does make lines parallel. Which lines does it make parallel? The top and the bottom or the left and the right? Well, angle one has nothing to do with uh, the top or the bottom. Angle two has nothing to do with the top or the bottom. If I erased 
the segment AB and BC, angle one and angle two would still be perfectly fine. If I drew AB in a, in a different place, like up to there, not to meeting all at the same vertex, then it wouldn't affect angle one at all. So uh, angle one and angle two make the left and the right parallel. So I'm gonna say that A, D is parallel to B, C. And five, my reason is if uh, lines, give me a second to remember, uh, are cut by a transversal, which I just write trans for, such that alt int angles are congruent, then they, referring to the subject of the sentence, the lines, are parallel. So I've now proved that the left and the right are parallel. And in those exact same two steps, step number four and step number five, I can say that angle three is congruent to angle four. So I'll mark those. And now that three and four are congruent for the exact same reason as AD being parallel to BC, I can say that AB is parallel to DC. And we are more or less there. I now have the top parallel to the bottom and the left parallel to the right. Well, that's what makes it a parallelogram. So I have accomplished what I set out to do. A, B, C, D is in fact a p-gram. And my reason is the only reason that we had prior to this new theorem uh, for proving that something is a parallelogram. And that is uh, if a quadrilateral has two pairs of parallel sides, then it is a p-gram. Okay, so there we have it. We have proved the second of the five ways. Uh, we're definitely not going to do formal proofs for all of them. Uh, but I will try to go through some informal proofs. Uh, the next reason I kind of call it the grand sampler, um, see if we can understand why. Uh, it says if a quadrilateral. Okay. Yes, buggy. Okay, we're back. <laughs> if a quad has one pair of parallel and congruent sides, then it is a p-gram. And of course, all of these things are going to end with the same bit, then it is a p-gram. Uh, so one pair of parallel and congruent sides. Um, so kind of looks like a this. And if you've noticed that I draw all of these so that they look like a square, that is on purpose. Um, we don't want to kind of give away what a shape is based on what it looks like. So one pair of sides parallel, and it really has to be the same pair of sides, which is congruent. Again, if I had uh, one pair of sides of parallel and another pair of sides congruent, that's actually right there, an isosceles trapezoid. This, on the other hand, is not. Let's see if we can prove it informally. So I'm going to draw in that diagonal again, which is kind of my go-to move. Now I started with parallel lines, so I will get my alternate interior angles being congruent. Uh, I will mention that this diagonal is congruent to itself, and I already have side angle side uh, to prove that these two triangles are congruent. 
which means that their corresponding parts are congruent. And if I uh, go with the sides, then I can just use my previous theorem and say, oh, well, it now has two pairs of opposite congruent sides. So clearly it is a parallelogram. Or I could have said, oh, well, CPCTC would tell me that these angles are congruent, uh, which are alternate interior angles, which would make the left and right parallel. And then I could go straight back to that definition. This one works as well. Um, I'm going to pause for a second because there's a few other ways of proving that something is a parallelogram. I don't remember the order that the book does. No, there's one that they don't use for whatever reason. So let me consult with my book. Okay. So I looked it straight out of the book. Uh, here is reason number four. Uh, and this is if a quadrilateral has diagonals that bisect each other, then, and how do they all end? It is a parallelogram. I know that uh, sometimes it's hard to read these things, so I didn't even bother writing it. If a quadrilateral has diagonals that bisect each other, then it is a parallelogram. Let's take a real quick look at that one in formally. This one, by the way, is uh, kind of surprisingly powerful, knowing stuff about the diagonals. Okay, so if they bisect one another, then they split one another into congruent parts. So I get something which looks like that. Well, with the vertical angles, I get that this angle is congruent to that angle. Okay. Um, with the uh, side angle side, I get that my triangles are congruent. And then I get that this pair of opposite sides are congruent. That gets me the left and the right. Could I do the same thing and get this left and this right, which were this top and this bottom? Of course I can. That guy's congruent to that guy, uh, which means that the top and bottom triangles are congruent. This triangle right here, for example, is congruent to this one down here. Uh, side angle side again, it gets me that this guy is congruent to that guy. And again, it all falls together. Um, gonna make an analogy but then decided against it. You guys don't want to hear my random ramblings. Okay, the last one according to the book. Um, yes, okay. If a quadrilateral has two pairs of opposite congruent angles, then it is a epigram. Okay, so there is my last of the five, two pairs of opposite congruent angles. Uh, you'll notice that this is diabolically similar to the five properties of a parallelogram. Uh, the first property of a parallelogram was, of course, its definition. The second property was that it had two pairs of opposite congruent sides. Uh, this one doesn't really match up with anything. Uh, that the diagonals bisect each other, that the opposite angles are congruent. The other property of a uh, parallelogram would actually work to prove that it is a parallelogram, and that is that any pair of consecutive angles are supplementary. But let's deal with this one first. Uh, don't know why my drawing skills are. Uh, are so questionable today. Um, so we are saying that this angle and that angle are congruent, that this large angle here and this large angle here are congruent. Hmm. Okay. Think about this one for a second. 
So instead of embarrassing myself by uh, showing you how long I'm thinking, well, I pondered it, uh, and I've really decided that this one is going to be very difficult to prove, uh, basically because there are two ways of doing it. One with theorems from chapter seven, which will be the next chapter that we do, um, but that seems like it would be strange for me to start talking about that now. Uh, or two with a little bit of a proof by contradiction, which is that whole thing that we skipped, that uh, if an assumption leads to a contradiction, then the assumption must be false kind of thing. Um, so I'm just going to have you guys take it on faith. Um, I will happily uh, go through it once we do chapter seven. Um, I just need one quick little thing, which is that the sum of the interior angles of any quadrilateral add up to 360. And from there, it would be pretty straightforward, but that's not a theorem or a formula that we have yet. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so those are the uh, five ways of proving that a figure is a parallelogram. Um, there is a, another one which uh, we don't need. Uh, in fact, the only one you really need because the rest of them are theorems, except uh, this one I was unable to prove yet. Um, the only one you need is the definition, but there is other ways out there as well. So um, the next day is going to be a full day of learning to prove everything else. Uh, parallelograms really are the heart and soul of it. Uh, so those are by far the most important. Uh, you need to prove that something is a parallelogram before you can decide that it is a rhombus, a rectangle, or in fact, a square. Uh, and you probably want to prove that something is not a parallelogram or show that it's unlikely to be a parallelogram before you start looking at either kite, which is really the last thing I look at, or anything in the trapezoid family. I'm kind of pointing over to the other side of the hierarchy as I do that. Okay, um, I have a small in-class assignment for you to complete upon watching this video. And that is simply to draw five things which look like squares, but are going to adhere to the strict geometry uh, definitions. They aren't squares unless you give me enough information to say that they are. The first one I'm going to do for you, and the first one I am going to make into a trapezoid with that first reason which is that it has two pairs of parallel sides. You have to do the same thing for those other four. And then send it in to me. I will, uh, I will open up a spot on the hub to do so. It will be called class assignment. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. Uh, it should take you literally a minute to do, probably longer to upload than to do. Uh, and I will see you guys uh, not on Friday because we X yet. Again. That can't be right. No, I will see you on Friday. I will see you. All right.